I'm Keep Jewel, and this is Comic Smack, your weekly, daily, all the time, anytime comic show where I give you your fix of everything you need to know from the world of comic books and superheroes. And on today's show, we're taking a closer look at Invincible Iron Man issue number nine. When Riri is given an ultimatum from the head of S.H.I.E.L.D., it will affect the rest of her life as a superhero. What'll happen next? Let's hop on in together and find out. So, as we join the comic, we're treated to yet another flashback of Riri Williams' formative years, in this case, in school, telling her teacher what she wanted to be when she grew up. The underlying theme in this flashback and indeed the idea that Bendis tries to get across in this whole issue is that while Riri was a smart kid, a prodigy even, she was rarely ever challenged. And without any new obstacles, without any mountain to climb or anything to overcome, Riri feared stagnation. It reminded me very much of Dash in The Incredibles and that whole idea about what happens when you force exceptional kids to dumb themselves down. Now, in the present, Ironheart along with Hollow Tony are rushing to the major explosion that was seen at the end of the previous issue, all the while Tony decides to talk to Riri about some of his favorite TV shows, including Freaks and Geeks. Apparently, Riri isn't much of a TV watcher, which is too bad, as Tony says the stories we tell each other define who we are and who we aspire to be. We tell stories to inspire, to warn. And wow, that's all really well said and pretty profound. If I didn't know any better, I would think Brian Michael Bendis was just laying clear his reason for writing comics right there, right? Now, someone put that on a shirt or a postcard. Ironheart shows up at the site of the explosion where S.H.I.E.L.D. agents are already locking the place down, including Nick Fury Jr. Hey man, where have you been at? You went undercover, then you had your own miniseries, now you're just back. If I didn't know any better, I would say this is Bendis ignoring other people's continuity once again. The agents begrudgingly let Riri inside, where she comes face to face with Sharon Carter. The two had had a standoff a couple issues back, and that more or less continues right here, right now. Hollow Tony says that maybe Riri should back off in this situation, that it's never really a good idea when these spy types have just been attacked to come wolf in in a powered suit, you never know what they might do or what they might ask of you. Agent Carter was lucky enough to get everyone out of the building before anyone was hurt, but she's royally ticked off at Von Bardis right now for making her look stupid. Worse still, because Von Bardis is still technically something of a lot varying politician, it's not like she can just mobilize a team to attack her right now without causing an international incident. Now, Ironheart, on the other hand, she could go where Carter couldn't do the things she couldn't be seen doing, and Sharon pretty much lays that ride out for Riri, in a sense becoming the person to challenge her. Before Riri can properly mull over this important decision, all parties come under attack by the freaking Lady Octopus, Carolyn Trainer. Wow, I totally forgot about this character, the replacement Doc Ock from the Clone Saga. Now this is actually an example of Bendis using continuity well. Apparently the last time Lady Octopus was in a comic, it was also to do the bidding of Von Barbas attacking S.H.I.E.L.D. Ironheart intercedes to help out the S.H.I.E.L.D. guys and we get treated to a big old fight. All the while, Riri and Carolyn trade verbal barbs back and forth to one another. By far the most cutting is Ironheart saying that at least she had the self-respect to not put Lady something in front of her name. From there, we transition on over to Latveria, where Von Bardis is pretty upset right now that her attack failed. Although, in all honesty, I can't help but feel her plan was failed from the get-go. I mean, she turned one guy into a living human bomb who ended up warning S.H.I.E.L.D. about it. Then when the explosion explosion failed, she still had paid a supervillain to come and mop up the rest? So yeah, already had a plan B in motion, it's like you didn't expect plan A to work in the first place. All that matters though is that when the Baroness turns her mechanized back, she comes face to face with Ironheart, who I guess made an important decision about going to help people out in need in Latveria. So that was Invincible Iron Man number 8 over 1, and overall I thought it was pretty good, even if I couldn't help but feel Riri actually got better development in the pages of infamous Iron Man also from this week. Again, they continue to draw a lot of interesting parallels between Riri and Tony. Not only was she smart, but you know, she was driven and sometimes wanted to show other people wrong that she could do stuff. I don't know what in particular this says about Sharon Carter, who's basically weaponizing a teenager to go do governmental dirty work. Jeez, I thought you would at least be better than Maria Hill. Now I don't know. Not really in love with how hands-off Von Bardis has been as a villain this arc, but here's hoping we actually get to see a cool smackdown in the next issue. Overall, though, I'd feel comfortable giving this one a 7 out of 10. Good, but not great. So there's Iron Man for you, everyone. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, why not look at some of these other videos I've worked on from throughout the week. Of course, you can always follow me on social media. Links both on screen and down in the description. And if you like this book and want to catch up on it or anything else in trade, you can over at Book Depository. I have a link, and if you use it, a small percentage goes to support me in the channel. So until next time, everyone, this has been Cape Jewel. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all again.